welcome to my conference about the classical guitar and its aesthetic implications in contemporary composition. My name is Alexander Michalcza and uh, I'm a performer of classical guitar and a composer working for my PhD with my master Dan Deju at the National University of Music in Bucharest. I've started my musical studies in my hometown of Suchaba at 10 years of age. I graduated high school there. Then I came to Bucharest where I started to learn from my bachelor in performance in classical guitar. And along the way, I've discovered an appetite for composition as well. So I have both a bachelor in performance and composition. My PhD is about ethics and the rhetorical codification in the history of Western music. It's about understanding feelings through um, a cultural and a psychological lens in a way that we can create archetypes with them, then translate them into musical archetypes that can be used as building blocks for your composition. For this conference, uh, I will use the ideas and systems that I, that I have developed in my PhD to better understand um, the aesthetics of the classical guitar, how and why can we use it in our own compositions, and uh, discuss a bit about the advantages and disadvantages of our instrument. First, we're going to talk about the finer points of my thesis and how does that work in understanding aesthetics and the nature of feelings in music. Then we're going to understand the aesthetics of the guitar, the classical guitar, and how that pertains to my thesis. We're going to talk about the advantages of writing for guitar, the disadvantages of writing for guitar, and finally, as an example, we're going to have an addition of two of my pieces, my, uh, my early works, in which I use a guitar to an extent that proves, in a way, my point. My thesis, Effects and the Rhetorical Codification in the History of Western Music, tries to understand feelings from a cultural and a psychological point of view. Cultural being the key here, because we can't really understand every type of archetype in, uh, in the broad sense of culture, so we need to, to slice a piece of it. So for this we need an analysis of the paradigm of effects from a psychological, aesthetical and cultural point of view. We need to discover and systemize archetypes pertaining to emotions and effects in the realm of music and contemporary composition, with my focus on orchestral music. From this we can gather archetypes such as fear, grace, power, sadness, uh, similar to the subject of aesthetics, but uh, from a musical point of view. Then we need to translate these archetypes of feelings into musical constructs that one can use in composition to evoke or emulate that type of emotion, in a broad sense. So the system is the idea of feeling into cultural psychological understanding, into aesthetical archetypes that translate into musical archetypes, and then musical techniques and constructs. So we come, for this system, to the classical guitar aesthetical archetype. Most, if not all, aesthetical archetypes come from cultural osmosis and stereotypes gathered from the great collective unconscious. Hence, the nature of the guitar, by use of our archetype system, can be perceived as being nostalgic, passionate, stoic, etc. Even though we are consolidated from a cultural and aesthetic point of view as performers of the classical guitar, our instrument is not very much used in contemporary ensembles, a thing I would very much like to change. Mm, this conference could be a, a, a step in that right direction. Uh, it's an open letter to people that would like to write for the guitar, people that uh, have tried to write for guitar and ensemble and maybe found the instrument difficult, maybe didn't understand how you could use it without amplifying it because of our small voice. So we have to, to think about the advantages and disadvantages of our instrument, how we can better use it in an ensemble, and to see aesthetically what it has to offer. Following up, we have the guitar disadvantages in composition. We have a low volume and a small register, things that can be used to our advantage, actually. We need to manipulate the types of instruments and types of dynamic we use 
why not just use harp? That's a thing that a lot of composers do. They just use the harp instead of the classical guitar. Well, the harp doesn't have a lot of things. It's easier to write for, but I think this is a thing we can change. Should I amplify it and why that is a hassle? The guitar can be amplified, the classical guitar, but we can use it in our own range of dynamics without any actual problems, but we need to compensate for them. Ignorance of advanced effects and possibilities of the guitar as an instrument. This is a problem we usually get mixed up with because most composers don't really have an idea of how to write to, uh, to the guitar. So as a performer, we should strive to actually show them now we get to guitar advantages in composition. We have a great timbre and expressivity. This is a thing we can use almost all the time with vibrato, non-vibrato. We can make use of our uh, very recognizable sound. It's a harp with vibrato and lots of effects. Bend, pizzicato, pizzicato barto, key bend, rain sounds and many more as we demonstrated previously. In the right kind of contemporary ensembles, the instrument can shine if the composer is aware of his strengths. So be aware of the things that make the guitar better or worse in certain circumstances. It's a unique sound and ethos can be an instant aesthetical boost to any piece of contemporary music. This is what my thesis, my doctorate thesis is about, about the ethos, about the feeling that a certain sound or type of composition gives. Guitar can amplify that to a certain extent in order to make what you want as a composer a reality. So things to, to understand uh, in our instrument in classical composition. Um, certain effects are heard, other type of effects are not. Certain effects can be used in a very uh, aesthetically pleasing way and a very uh, signature type of way. Uh, for example, we have the tremolo. An effect that can be used in a manner of ways. And it's also, uh, can be very loud at times, so you, you can actually hear that. We have um, to fall back in, in places of great power. We have the pizzicato barto. A thing that you can hear in any ensemble, we, we can use uh, rain sounds as an effect. It also can be very much heard. Uh, we can play over the bridge. We can use bends. We can combine bends with vibrato. We have access to such a kaleidoscope of effects and aesthetics that can be used in composition. For a deeper understanding of the classical guitar and how it can be used in a contemporary ensemble, I've put forward two of my pieces from the past. First one is called Legamund or Bonds. It's a quintet for classical guitar, clarinet in B, vibraphone, percussion and cello. Included in the nostalgia archetype, techniques that are used are the main instrument is placed in front of the ensemble to make it more heard because we talked about our low volume. The main theme is composed for the guitar, so it's very recognizable. The second piece is called l'invocation or invocation. It's a septet for classical guitar, piano, clarinet in B and string quartet. It's included in the grace archetype. Techniques that are used are a continuum, the guitar is almost always in the background. We have a cadenza, a solo moment where the guitar is the main protagonist, pizzicato bartok, and a postmodern renaissance moment playing to the strengths of the instrument. Enjoy.
Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed the auditions. I hope that through this conference, some of you got to a better understanding about the classical guitar, about aesthetics in general, and how we can use the classical guitar in a contemporary ensemble. Thank you very much.